Hoeing Kingdom Evening News. Our top story is the Emergency Proclamation C-19. The um, occupying government has actually um, implemented uh, this morning at 12.01 a emergency proclamation stating that um, people must um, stay home mm -hmm. to um, confine yourself within your, um, your homes. Under this um, proclamation, we at the Hawaiian Kingdom News have taken the initiative to create um, our, our pass. This is a, um, a pass that we have. At, um, and this pass here is to uh, recognize all of our, um, our, our human rights under Article 19 of the um, international law. So this um, pass right here ensures that we can um, move freely within this um, proclamation that was um, established um, midnight um, or this morning at um, 12 a.m. Yes, mahalo everybody. Um, for a special edition of Hawaiian Kingdom News, Dark Side of Hawaiian Politics, um, as KP Express, um, this happened to occur organically that we had to um, exercise our Article 19 human rights to freedom of press and media because due to the lack of mobilization of our communities and to the fact of our social distancing requirements, um, we have decided that we're reaching out to every district upon our Moko Okeave. If you guys are um, out in your Puonua or in your Ahupua'as that have continued to malama your beaches and your areas and your parks, um, this is the news that we felt urgent that uh, we wanted to bring to you. And so with that being said, uh, mahalo for you guys joining us. And once again, we will be broadcasting twice a week, um, every Wednesday nights around 6 and Saturday mornings as such at 7, 7 a.m. Yes, that's correct. So mahalo for all you guys tuning in. And so for the weather today out on Moko Keawe, it was typically rainy throughout the whole process. Um, up on the Mauna, uh, we need some cocoa up there. There are people up there still cleaning up. So if you guys have time, please go up to the Mauna and cocoa because uh, we're minimizing our carbon footprint up there um, because of the coronavirus. So I would like to mahalo the staff, um, the Kia'is, and the Mauna medics who continue to endure this weather and um, stay clear of this pandemic that has been sweeping across our uh, Hawaiian kingdom. And so mahalo you guys, that's your weather. And now we want to go over our updates um, for our Corona virus stats, COVID-19. We have our stats brought to you by KP, our South Pacific Polynesian stats update for this week, March 25th, 2020, Wednesday. So KP, um, could you please share some of your update stats throughout Polynesia? All right, so what I'm going to do right now is um, share an update of all of um, the South Pacific. And um, there's actually some changes within the, um, in the South Pacific. So I'm going to go over um, each um, island. All right, so within a matter of four days, there have been some changes. Okay, so I'll start off with um, American Samoa. American Samoa, Samoa they don't have any... Um, active um, coronavirus um, people on island. In uh, Tahiti, uh, from just um, four days ago, they had 11. Today, they have 25. So it's additional 14 cases. In Guam, um, on uh, March 21st, they had uh, 12 individuals. Today, on the on 25th, they have 37. So uh, in a they have an additional 26 um, cases and one death. On uh, New Caledonia, on um, March 21st, they had two cases. Mm -hmm. Today, they have 14, so that's an additional 12. Holy blue. Okay, um, on the island of Samoa, uh, they have currently five, so there's no changes. Uh, Cook Islands, they have no, um, no cases, no changes. Fiji, um, from uh, the 21st of March, they had no cases. Today, 
they have five cases. In the Hoeing Kingdom, our last report, last week on Saturday, the count was 37. Today, we have 90 cases. Staggering so 90 cases, so KP. It, so it is an additional 53 of the, all of the Polynesian islands, we have the most cases because our airports are open. Mm -hmm. Sea parts are open. Okay. Um, Kingdom of Tonga, they have no cases. Kiribati, no cases. Marshall Islands, no cases. Micronesia, no cases. Northern Mariana Islands, no cases. Nauru, no cases. Tokelau, no cases. Tuvalu, no cases. Solomon Islands, no cases. Papua New Guinea, from last week um, on the 21st till now, they have one case. Uh, Palau, no cases. Nui, no cases. Rapa Nui, last week on the 21st, they had no cases. Today, on the 21st, they have one case. And finally, Vanuatu, they have no cases of corona. So, KP, um, you know, mahalo for continuing to stay on the stats. You know, this is a very, you know, complicated topic to keep track of, especially in the South Pacific, where the data isn't too um, feasible, where we have to research a lot, right? And so you've been keeping data since 321 from last from our last episode. Yes, on Saturday. And it, actually before that, but mm -hmm. we don't have the stats up right now. We'll bring that to you live in the next episode. But KP has been doing this data for about three weeks, we would say. Yes, about three, three weeks. weeks. And so every week we see, well, we get to experience this increase from this data collection because like the numbers that KP is sharing from 11 out in Tahiti all the way to 25 now, that's in a span of four days, Kako. Four, four days. And so, so KP, you know, just the, the red numbers, the red numbers, it stands out that it's just tripling all over this um, South Pacific Kingdom, yeah? Yes. And so... That was just crazy. I just seen a no count go up to 12. I don't know if that's real timing, but that's crazy if it is, KP. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, that's amazing. But could you share a little bit more about maybe some concerns about like those other cousins of ours? Because Guam looks like they got a pretty heavy increase. Yes, very um, large increase uh, simply because of uh, people coming within the islands and um you know being positive of the coronavirus but you look at the majority of the polynesian islands they have no cases simply because they took um, initial steps proactive proactive shutting down their ports and shutting down the airports so they don't have anybody actually coming in to um, infect um, their population yes yes so so just like we have to follow plan of suit of, of all of our other um, no counts out in the South Pacific, um, we have to shut down our ports and our airport because this is where um, the the diseases and the virus seek through. Um, and so up on the statistics, those are your cases, your new update cases, and we actually have two other cases. Um, one case we have um, two CO. Naka Yama, 75, Micronesian president is dead. We have one confirmed case um, in the South Pacific, KP. Um, were you surprised that one of the Micronesia's ex-president is one of the contractors for the virus? Yeah, because simply because um, a lot of the uh, politicians, they continue to travel. Yeah, you know, and and so look, look at um, you know the of uh, the British um, prince, he's tested um, positive, uh -huh. he has a um, corona um, virus, simply because interaction with other people. And so, 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 so this Nakayama, who as the first president of the federal states of Micronesia, helped his country emerge from American control. He died March 29th in Eva Beach. Um, of, of of these kind of issues so 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 these these things we have to you know we 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 have to you know there's there's these deaths outside that we have to try and get a hold of and that's kind of like those things that we have to get so up our recovery we do have a recovery story and our recovery story is 
Um, we have a Filipino. We have a Filipino, um, first Filipino national diagnosed with COVID-19. He shares his experience. Um, this was Star Advertiser News reports. And he, just like um, other COVIDs, experienced a lot of, um, he traveled too. This, this individual traveled and basically he went out and done um, some traveling and came back home with the flu. And basically, he's sharing his, his, his heroic story of survival right. and recovery. So if you guys have time, um, go ahead and go check out these recovery stories um, because these recovery stories actually um, help encourage that there are possibilities of strength um, with this virus at hand, at pandemic. Yes, because they also, um, you know, some of the physician also shared is also um, based on blood type, A type, is more resistant to the uh, virus compared to O type, and so you know that's really interesting. Even with the um, the um, you know how people get the virus within different parts of the country around the world, because it seems that the the cold weather countries they have a, um, a larger chance of spreading the virus, you know, versus warmer um, weather um, areas. Yes, so. That right there, Kako, is some stats that has been going around in your South Pacific that, um, and international that we just kind of follow up that we need to watch that these things, um, as it increases, as recovery sets in, and so we can have a practical plan to address these issues. Oh, yes. So, KP, and um, <clears throat> for your local news, we have your, your local politician news with the Ige Fernandez 50th state unfair where they continue to mismanage and put our our families at risk so we actually have our national parks right now that are opened um which we feel like should be shut down KP oh yes everything should be shut down and it seems like um the occupying um government always you know dropped the ball it's like it's um, business as usual, and it's money first before people. And so the, the national parks, um, the head directors of these national parks, so these are some stats on the national parks in Hawaii. Um, the Hawaii National Parks brings in majority of the bulk of all national park fundings, and that is a staggering number. It's within the millions per year that they, they basically fund um, to campaign all national park services. I believe Hawaii covers more than 70% of, I could be wrong, 70% to 60% of all costs for the national park services, um, for their services and the jobs that they have to do. That's how much visitors come to Hawaii and or to our Hawaiian kingdom to check out our national treasures, our national park with Tutu Pele and where our national treasures um, resides. So every time when we see um, these these kind of issues during this emergency proclamation, it just grows great concern that our community um, repeatedly tells our government to follow um, procedures of safety, um, the mechanisms that are laid out in the proclamation, but the national park um, where it has the highest track of visitors still get to roam, KP. So it's simply because, you know, it's all about the money. You know, even before you can get into the park, you have to pay, right? So it's all about make, making money. And, you know, if you look, the bottom line is, you know, is the current government has no disregard for the population in the Hawaiian Islands. They only want to continue to make money, you know, and that's actually a problem because who's going to, you know, um, get the, um, the short end of the deal is the people who live here. <sighs> yes. So there you guys, you know, this continuing Ige Fernandez show where our parks remain open and we are being vulnerable to this pandemic is unacceptable and we have to hold um Ige as well as well as um Harry Kim and all of the Caldwells accountable because of this this is why our community um <clears throat> within this 
uh, Ige Fernandez show, our community out in Keokaha. We like to mahalo um, our keiki, our keiki kiai. Um, we have a picture of them. I'm sorry about the quality, but those ohana who also came out with um, Chief Ha'a to Malama, our Keokaha areas where we have a high density of kupuna in Keokaha, yes. KP. So that's kind of like um, our stance and surge out in um, Paneeva when um, Harry Kim basically allows all the parks to shut down, but he keeps. Except, mm -hmm. Yeah. Except DHHL. Except for parks. DHHL, yeah. our, our crown yeah. lands. They kept it open, hoping to see how far we would go to let this pandemic um, kind of engage in our community that is under the radar right so this is the reason why we the people need to take the initiative to protect ourselves to protect our natural resources that's so why we have initiatives down at home now now shutting down the parks we have our um our people shutting down ypo valley yes Ho'okena, and going all the way to kau we need to safeguard us the yes. people first safeguard so yeah kp you know um mahalo to the ohana who are down at the park sides down in your ahupua'a in your kuleana that continue to um engage in this in this pandemic to educate and warn people especially those who are not from here that they must go back home and um, be with their families in this time it's not based out of hate or no, or these kind of concepts where you've been seeing lately in the news that a lot of people are kind of um, getting the racial slurs, but this Amoko Kiave, I don't think we've witnessed that. It's more of um, protection, right? Right. It's more a concern of right. our people. It's nothing to do with race. It's the safety of our population in the Hawaiian Islands. Yes. So the safety, first and foremost, and our community sticking their necks out. And not only our community, our officers, um, our other public services, uh, services who is continuously being out there to warn the general public, yeah, to, uh, to maintain um, this kind of um, strategic safety mechanisms. Right. Practice your, your social distancing. Make sure you're not gathering in these large numbers. But the foreigners um, that come over on vacation, as you've seen in Waikiki, so we don't have the footage, but they're just out there. And the officers af actually have to go out there and um, put on the sirens yes. and request for them to go back to their rooms. So we're being pretty lenient out in um, Kohava Ipai Aina. I've noticed like um, people are not getting arrested, but I've seen some tickets that happened outside of in the Wainai area where people are getting, Hawaiians are getting ticketed for surfing. But if you look at areas, public areas. To me, it's racism. Yes. They go out into our uh, population, you know, like Wainai, all on that stuff, and they're giving people citation tickets. Why don't they enforce it in Waikiki? Yes. And give them the tickets. Yes, KP. That's exactly what it is. Because if you look at Waikiki, Waikiki is, is a very densely population where everybody attracts to. And where you're looking at Wainai, I can exactly see where you're saying that it's racially profiling. Right. That's exactly. generalizing where our low income lives. And that's where basically our bigger ohanas gather. Yes. So when we see that um, tickets are being handed out in our our rural communities, but in the urban communities, people can sneeze on each other and surf and do whatever. Right. That needs to end. And so with that being said, um, uh, in this whole Ige Fernandez show, you know, Paneva Kelka had to get shut down, you know, all of these things. What we must do is um, continue to um, petition right petition our leaders to to take this step um and even if they did do this i know that ige and his um, administration continues to to go down this path yeah and that's where it's where it's very scary for our community is um during this time of pandemic we try to organize and strategically protect our kupuna and keiki right but we're getting overridden by um a senile um mayor um harry kim Yes. He just seems to forget about our kupuna and that we hold them very dear and sacred, that we must preserve that their life. Right. Exactly. And, you know, if you look at, you know, his history, he was raised by um, Kanaka. Yeah. And yet 
he doesn't use the um, the teachings of his kupuna to look after kupunas now. Yes, so, you know that's a that's a big problem. He said, you know, this um, C nineteen, you know, it takes a really large toll on kupuna. So the emphasis is to protect the kupuna. And you know it's it's not being done. Yes, yes, and this is another thing too that you know during this whole Ige Fernandez show, right? Um, the legislation has called for Lieutenant Governor Josh Green to take the lead. Yes, as correct. a doctor, mm -hmm. right? And um, so the 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 problem you have, the challenges you have, is that you have a physician who knows about you know viruses illnesses and yet the the uh, governor takes him out and and he puts in a general and it's like why are you putting in a general the general knows how to um, conduct uh, tactics in a war not about medicine so it's like saying I'll, I'll tell you this okay it's like if your car is broken who are you gonna look for are you going to look for a mechanic or you're going to look for a carpenter, a uh, fashion designer, or a um, poet? And it's what the Ige is doing. He's, he's actually going to a poet, um, a carpenter, you know. And at the end of the day, your car is still broken. Mm -hmm. So you need to bring in the mechanic. And that mechanic is Josh Green because he has the experience He's a doctor. And, uh, you know, if you look at the whole situation, is that he doesn't want the lieutenant governor speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. They want to actually say, you know, like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, by um, Easter, everything's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay because if this is, this, um, you know, um, C-19 is in its early stages. Look at China. Look at Italy. Look what they went through. You think we, we're not um, actually going, we're not going through all of this stuff where you know a lot of more people going to get infected? We are going to get infected, so we need to close down the ports. We need to close down the airports and the seaports, and you need to bring back the um, lieutenant governor in yes. that circle. And so yes, um, the lieutenant governor, he actually knows how to follow procedures. And rule of law. Mm -hmm. Because right now, Pu'onua, Owainai, as well as um, our houseless kanakas um, out in Waimanalo, our beachfront, um, they have no um, access to water. And they are the ones being um, forced to um, this kind of cruelty. Right. Um, our own kanaka, yeah. But if, if Lieutenant um, Governor Josh Green... Um, would take over the reins. Um, naturally, he knows that that these things are very important to keep open for our necessities for our Hawaiian nationals. Yeah, our Hawaiian nationals. Just because those um, don't have a home or don't have uh, the high-paying job to sustain, they 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 still deserve equal rights. Exactly. Um, the rights to the water to use facilities for proper um, <clears throat> proper care, and that's. The main issue is this COVID is bringing out um, the pettiness of um, the Ige Fernandez administration. They keep on exposing how irresponsible they are to the Hawaiian nationals and to the heirs of Kohava Ipai Aina. Even though that we we um, we continue to struggle and coexist in this time of occupation, um, when the COVID epidemic or pandemic happens, um, you see our neighborhoods, our lower income get ticketed first they get their water turned off first yeah they don't have a place a safe pu'uhonua no more right no not only that it's it it's because a lot of our houseless hawaiians who are living on the beaches they also being targeted they turning off the water you know so where are they going you know they should be left alone because there's no place to go well we just we just mahalo for the leadership you know Anake, um, all those ohana who, who are suffering at the moment. Um, we, that's why we decided to bring this partial um, 
new segment out because we know that the state has continued ha is continuing to violate human rights um, of our Kanakas out there during this COVID pandemic. They continue to do that. They, they continue to not follow the rule of law simply because they're the occupiers. It all started in January 17, 1893, and it continues to today. They don't, they're not looking out for the best interests of us. They're looking out for the best interests for themselves and big business. Yes. So, you know, this is the continuance of what we see and what we're experiencing. And um, I'm pretty sure out there, Kauai, Paiyana, and other um, districts in Ahupua'a, you guys have um, similar and probably way more intense stories that we're going to receive in through our daily experience. So um, we would like to hear more. Um, if you guys have any concerns out there with our sweeps, illegal sweeps of our houseless nationals out there, if you guys have um, concerns about our kupuna um, who, who don't have those um, affordables out there, um, please let us know how we can help. Um, this is just like you guys. We are just in the mix with you guys, and we are in the same struggle, and we learn as we grow, and we learn as we grow. So um, this is kind of like your kuleana as well as ours. If you guys have issues um, <clears throat> with the, not, not only with how things are conducted, but if it pertains to your moku, um, please, please report. Please be the first ones to, to respond to these pandemic crises. Yes. And, you know, so this is not like the end of the world. Yeah. We need to actually take the initiative to, you know, raise our own food and also, um, you know, help others. Yes. We also need to actually, you know, as um, Kanaka Maoli, as people of this island, we, we have a, a strong bond with Aloha. So, you know, check in with your friends, check in with your family, you know, just go and, you know, text them, go call them up, and, you know, just see how they're doing. That's all. Just see how your friends and family are doing. You know, and it's give them a positive note that you care about them in this time. Yes. Yeah. And um, so I always encourage people is to take the initiative, you know, and start um, farming, you know, do gardening, do aquaponics, do hydroponics and all that stuff. Our videos, educational videos are going to, you know, come out shortly so people can under fully understand how to um, raise your own food. And, you know, it's not going to take hundreds of dollars. You know, we're going to yeah. show you simple techniques where you can raise tomatoes, um, you know, kale and other stuff. But we need to get back to basics, you know, raise, start raising, you know, your own food. Take the initiative. Yes, yes. So, so as we as we move through this Corona pandemic, you know, we always want to bring you update um, and the continuance of the neglect of the people. But not only that, um, at the end of the updates, we would always want to um, shed light on the support system that's going to help each other get through this pandemic. And I think this is a this is a big key within um, uh, within this whole. Um, crisis that we look towards the resolutions and the remedies that will help us come through um, these these issues but for some now we wanted to show some things that was available so there's a federal disaster loan available for from the um, the US Small Business Administration announced Friday offering low interest federal disaster loans for working capital in small businesses and nonprofit organization which I know a lot of our families have out in um, Hawaii yes. and out in Kova Ipai Aina and um, this could be a very um, good thing right for our community oh, yes. to engage mm -hmm. it yeah, mm -hmm. especially if you're a nonprofit organization and do a lot of malama aina around these things. These things, these times are very hard, and um, <clears throat> every help counts. Every help counts, right? Oh yes, every help counts. Yeah. And so there's also the Hawaii Agriculture Foundation. If you can check it out, it's on your local Tribune and Herald um, dot com website. That launched to help Hawaii's restaurants to stay afloat. So right now, KP, we're actually doing a, a pretty huge campaign, and I'm thinking that people are adapting pretty well with the takeout ordering. Yes, there's actually a transition now with a lot of restaurants, 
and now you can't actually sit in the restaurants, but they're providing, they, they continue to provide food, but you need to, um, you know, many of the restaurants, you have to call in and order the food. So, you know, even the restaurants are actually feeling the impact because they're not having, a, you know, the, the normal um, population of people coming in and you know, sitting down within the restaurants. So, you know, they're making changes and actually within the community to help the community. We also have a lot of uh, nonprofits now providing free food, free yes. meals, you know, yes. like Boys and Girls Club. You know, they're, they're private, um, providing meals for, for keikis. So that's good. And within the, um, you know, the farming um, community, they're also actually putting in, um, you know, some fruits and vegetables and selling it boxes um, at a discount rate so within the community they're helping each other and helping us at the same time yes and along with them um there's there, there's actually you know the food and our kupuna hours um you guys can go check out um mayor marzo's page uh he just posted um a list of kupuna hours and um kupuna markets that are basically in support of, of our strong hours for our kupuna, and making sure that they're provided for. So mahalo once again, if you guys have time, go ahead and check out Hikaika Marzo, Mayor Marzo's page, and um, you can get to see a local listings of KTA out in Kalapana markets and so forth around the islands, Kona, I believe that have a few uh, markets. Um, Malama your kupuna out there, yeah? Because all these markets that are, that are open, um, just for a, just for a short window frame just for our kupuna yeah um that's what we have to do is make sure that we have these windows available um i, I would highly suggest if you could get them um get them their food get them their supplies don't let your kupuna leave right right so i encourage you if you have you know kupuna you know like during you know uh, from the age of 60 to 80 call them up ask them you know what they need so instead of they going out, you know, to um, get their food, just go and pick up their food for them. And 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 also Maku'u Market, Maku'u Market just um, put out their farmers market online yes. on Facebook. So go ahead, give them a like, give them a follow, get your local produce on um, uh, out there in Maku'u Homestead. Uh, mahalo to the family and the ohana who continue to work tirelessly out there on your aina ho'opula pula. Well, now is the time because um, now is the time planting is necessity. And that's kind of what we're talking about, right, KP? We're talking about um, your aina ho'opula pula series. Right. Um, not aina ho'opula pula, but that's where you're at, the aina yes. ho'opula pula, but mm -hmm. your ho'olu la hui series. Yes. And so you're wrapping up almost on your session with your um, aquaponics, right? Right, aquaponics and hydroponics. So the video is going to start from actually uh, propagation of seeds all the way through um, you know, various techniques of aquaponics and hydroponics. Yes, Kako. And so um, keep connected, right? Know where you're donating right know what you guys need to do there's aquaponic lessons that are out and if you guys don't have we're gonna have um hopefully um guys will have a, a series um ready for you um it'll be broken down into steps i'm assuming yes right because it's a long it's a it's a long series about an hour and a half pretty long not that long but they're going to break it down and edit it into a series where um you guys will be able to function and get it down for the lowest price right yeah yeah so a lot of the stuff that we use is actually recycled stuff. So we're trying to keep the cost down and be very effective on, on growing um, food. Yes. That's, that's the, um, the main objective if for people to have uh, free access to food. So whatever you, um, you enjoy eating, just go you know, and plant it. And you, know, you can have it. So it doesn't matter if you live in a... Um, you know, a three bedroom house with five acres, or you live in a condo or an apartment, you still can um, have aquaponics or hydroponics in a small system, but being very effective for you to actually have um, food access. Yes. And so, with that being said, you will, would like to look at our volunteers. So, there's many volunteers out 
support systems out there that are volunteering sewing masks for health workers facing shortage aimed to coronavirus updates. So there's a huge campaign out there right now um, that we want to, you know, at least acknowledge a few times. Um, one is a fashion designer, Brianna Deline, out in South Carolina. She is... Um, She's a fashion model, fashion model designer, and she's taking her time to sew um, these masks for her workers at her health care centers. Yes. So, um, mahalo to these kind of inspirations. And I see a lot of local um, vendors out there. Sorry we couldn't get your name up right now, but there's, um, I, I don't know if the maker was Aloha Aina um, Care Mask, but there's nice masks out there that people are making, um, which I believe, you know, safety is a must. So thank you for looking out, you know, internationally and locally. Right. So if you guys find these local people making those masks, those local masks, um, go ahead and support, you know. Um, they're, they're, they're doing their part. Um, maybe it may not be surgically fit for the doctors or, or so, but any help to cover your respiratory nose and your right. mouth, mm -hmm. um, I believe, is a plus. And if you can kind of look good while you're doing it, go ahead and support. Right. So um Probably on Saturday um, on um, our um, news or podcast, we're going to have a list of um, people actually taking initiative. We're going to have a list of the um, farmers markets and other um, individuals who's actually um, reaching out to help the community. Yes, yes, and and even and even Tesla, Tesla CEO says he bought ventilation centers from from china for us too so we see a we see our support system locally and we see all over the world if this inspires you um your creativity to kokua if you guys have the necessary means or um the creativity um means to um relieve some of these pressures yes. that our our daily um lives have been kind of altered by with your common masks with um, gloves and um, just all these other techniques, yeah. And um, check out your local farmers for your vitamin C's, for your vitamin C's, your local honeys, your mamake tea. Um, this is the way to combat um, healthy living, right? Right. For for this CV19. So, um, with that being said, um, that is your coronavirus update um, for your March 25th KP. For your rapid aloha to mahalo to anybody out there that you wanted to make aloha out to for your farmer's market or those people who are working in this pandemic. Um, do you have somebody out there that you would like to mahalo for working these hours and still delivering their foods and still being available? Well, I just want to um, mahalo a each and every one of you who's taking initiative to make this um you know, a crisis um, better for the community. Thank you for the people out there in the in the different districts on Hawaii Island, all the way through Kauai, for um, stopping the tourists from entering into our um, our natural resources. I want to thank people who's actually you know um, sharing their um, their food. Yes. To, you know, for the community. You know, and. Um, Keep on, you know, doing what you guys are doing. You know, we need to actually uh, go through this whole, you know, uh, uh, C-19 episode. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're still going to survive, but we're going to have to, you know, make changes in life. We cannot be dependent on, you know, importing food and all of that other stuff that's being imported. Yes. So, you know, mahalo so maka, maka hanaka ike. What do you have for them? To the next time we see on Saturday, what is the jobs that we should be attending to these next few days? Okay. In prep. What I um what I want ask each and every one of you is to actually reach out to yeah. your kupuna, mm -hmm. ask them if they need any assistance, ask them if they need any food, and go and you know help them. That's what I ask of you. Yes. So makahana ka'ike, like you said, go check on your kupuna. Make sure, make sure your gardens are being maintained. Make sure your relationships are being um, mended to great standings. Uh, make sure you look out for each other and continuing, continuing to be proactive and safe. Stay at home until we see each other next week Saturday. Mahalo and see you again. Dark Stay side of wine politics. Aloha. Oi. Disclaimer.
first topic that we had. Um, we have to double check that, but no deaths at this moment has to be clarified. Sorry for that in the, in the beginning clip. We must look at that deeper. But mahalo for joining us, and we'll catch you again on Saturday.